What's going on everyone, Austin John please here, and today I'm going to be going over how you can farm arrows in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. In this video, I'm going to be going over just some quick tips at the beginning that are going to be actual recommended practices while you're actually exploring the game that you may want to get in. That way you don't run out of arrows. And then I'm going to be going over some actual farming locations and strategies. As early as when you first started playing the game, you may have come across these large wooden crates pretty much everywhere throughout the game, very present in the Sky Islands. Axes or just any strong, heavy two handed weapon is going to be able to break these open and here you're going to be able to find bundles of arrows now these bundles of arrows can either come in fives tens or just singles these boxes always respawn on the regular world interval which if you didn't know anytime that you're outside of this particular chunk which is broken into a giant 8 by 10 grid of the entire map as long as you're not in that 180th of the entire world every minute there's a one percent chance that it's going to respawn so it's generally seen as if you explore for two hours outside of that area, extremely high likelihood that these particular items are going to respawn. Always, 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 please break them open. That's going to solve a lot of your arrow problems. Next, let's talk about enemy drops. When you come to enemy encampments, there's going to be a bunch of enemies here. If you come in the wee hours of the morning, then, uh, then they're going to be sleeping and it makes it much easier for you to get some sneak strikes on them like how I'm able to take him down with just, you know, a couple of hits. And at these enemy encampments, you're going to be finding boxes here as well. So after going around and clearing out the rest of the encampment, we could just feel free to come on in here and destroy these boxes, which are going to have arrows for us. Remember, boxes equals arrows. Before you go ahead and engage with an enemy that you can't take out in one complete hit, like the uh, the silver boss bow goblin over there, you definitely want to take out anyone that could be alerted to your presence. Gotta love one-shotting enemies when you do all your calculations right. Now, one of the reasons I'm talking about this right now is because it has to do with the shields that Bokoblins typically have. More times than not, it's a fantastic place for you to find things like traveler shields, as well as the Boko shields, wooden shields, things like that, which are gonna be useful for the next bit of tips that I have for you. At these multi-floor camps, you can usually find some nice supplies, but mostly these boxes. For just taking a little bit more time exploring, just come over here, break open these boxes, get yourself some arrows. Let's talk about archer enemies. Archer enemies are unique because they have an infinite stock of arrows. And if you go ahead and if you block their arrows with any sort of metal or zonite shield, they're just going to dissipate into nothingness. However, if you have a wooden shield, you're going to be able to hold it in front of you. You're going to see that arrow now stuck in my wooden shield directly in the middle. He got a nice, nice shot there. I now have two arrows in there, three arrows. And then when I let go of the shield button, you'll see that those three arrows just enter into my inventory. You can do this per single arrow, and this is a fantastic way, especially when you're in the shrines that strip you of everything. If they give you a bow and you're out of arrows, and they give you a wooden shield, which typically most of them do, you could just do this to easily get some arrows when facing those construct enemies. You can just do this forever <laughs> until you're out of shields. I think on the last hit, it, the shield is going to break and you're not going to get that arrow. And unfortunately, if you go ahead and decide to attach a board to a shield, that's not going to magically transform it into a wooden shield. It does not work for this arrow farming trick. Any enemy that has a bow and is actively shooting arrows has a chance that once he explodes, you're going to be getting arrows from him. It's not guaranteed. There's just a chance at it. Something pretty important to talk about is that any time that you're going to be shooting a bow and arrow, and if you don't hit a target, meaning that you don't do damage to anything, that arrow is just going to fall down to the ground and you can just pick it up. A fantastic change that they made from Breath of the Wild is that anytime that you shot a multi bow, because the arrow was considered to be splitting in mid air, you weren't able to actually go ahead and collect the arrow. They changed that so that now the middle arrow is always going to be collectible. So even if you're using multi shot bows in the end game, you're still going to be able to go ahead and collect your missed arrows, which is so fantastic. Supposedly, they also did this to fix the uh, the fire arrow glitch in Breath of the Wild that you're able to use a multi shot bow on specific pots to duplicate the arrows that either doesn't work at all or just has not been found as a glitch in Tears of the Kingdom. Now, when it comes to fusing specific things to arrows, if I go ahead and if I fuse this Phoenix toenail to an arrow, 
and then I shoot it at this wall. Because the Hoenix toenail doesn't do anything when it actually makes contact, both items are going to unfuse and then just fall back down to the ground, as opposed to Choo Choo Jelly, which explodes on impact. Because it explodes on impact, the fused item and the arrow itself are going to be gone. If I fuse Ice Fruit, because it has impact, it's going to be getting rid of. But the Soldier Construct Horn, that's just a damage additive, it's just going to be reobtainable for you. Something else to talk about is after you clear a shrine, the contents of the shrine somewhat respawn. So for example, the combat training archery shrine, the Maku Kurvish shrine, which is right next to the Tabantha Great Bridge. Even though I have completed this shrine and the enemies are gone and I've opened up the chest and I already got the ball of light, these arrows, which are two bundles of 10, are going to be respawning regularly. Again, they're gonna be following the same world over spawn intervals, which is anytime that you're not in that one chunk of the map, then it has a 1% chance every minute to respawn. So in theory, every two hours you can come here and get 20 arrows for free. Almost perfectly directly above that shrine is the Sky Shrine over here on Courage Island. And again, two bundles of 10 arrows respawn 1% chance every minute when you're not in the chunk. After two hours, high likelihood that they're back. After three hours, very high likelihood. So for one minute of work going between these two shrines after you clear them, that's 40 arrows for free. Now let's go ahead and talk about specifically farming arrows. Anytime that you're gonna be finding large encampments of enemies, a great example of that is gonna be battle taluses. Here on Hyrule Field, here's the Yamio Shrine and here's gonna be one of the battle taluses. Of all these enemies, two of them are not archers. If we go ahead and take care of the Korok front enemies, that one and that one, as they're just throwing stones at us. The three of them are archers. Now, if you stay just out of their range, they're going to do a very poor job on aiming at you. Now, if you have a wooden shield, feel free to use that. You can literally just hold a wooden shield, walk left and right, and it's a very low likelihood that they're actually gonna reach you, and then just go ahead and grab some of the arrows from the ground. Now, while these archers do have an infinite supply of arrows, they actually changed how the game mechanics worked from Breath of the Wild when the developers realized, hey, you could just stay here forever and get arrows. They made it so there's a limited amount that will actually remain on the ground. So because of that, after they fire off a certain amount and they're no longer sticking to the ground, you then have to fast travel away and come back. You can choose to do this with a travel medallion or you can respawn or come back later, whatever you want to do. But as long as they are still the same enemy and haven't been knocked out or a blood moon hasn't happened, their arrows are still going to have a finite amount that they can actually land on the ground and you can pick them up. And also my travel medallion was far away and the total time it took is going to be listed on screen below. Bottom line is 16 arrows for about a minute of work, not bad, and it's free. And also something really nice is that these bow goblins that are on top of a battle talus are immune to the EXP level curve. So no matter how much experience points you have on the hidden level system that I made a video explaining how that works, these bow goblins are going to never level up. So me standing here with a defensive, what do I have? Two. If I go ahead and take off all my armor, they did, I think, seven damage. But if I go ahead and put a single piece of armor on that has a defense of eight, they're now only going to be doing a quarter of a heart every time that they hit which the point of them isn't for them to actually hit you. It's just sometimes can happen. Now, if you're absolutely flush with rupees like I am after making my video on how to go about getting the rare stone taluses and then using that for farming, I have 34 diamonds without duping. And as you could also see right here, I have the stone talus monster metal. So I cleared all of them from the entire game. Using them, if you have a whole bunch of rupees and a whole bunch of diamonds, you can get yourself a whole bunch of arrows from purchasing but not from stables. Beetle is gonna be selling you arrows for the highway robbery price of six rupees per arrow as individuals or as a bundle of five, which is so expensive. <laughs> Meaning that if you were to sell him one diamond, you're gonna be getting 83 arrows, which is not good at all. However, if you go to the general store in most of the larger societies, you're gonna be finding arrows here and they're cheaper at four rupees per arrow and they have three bundles of arrows. So that's 15 arrows at the price of 60 rupees, which compared to Beetle's pricing, that means that one diamond is gonna get you 125 arrows, which is 
so much better of a deal. Now, if you wanted to go around and collect these items from these vendors very, very quickly, it's actually pretty easy. All you need to do is go ahead and drop down a travel medallion literally in front of the arrows. And now let's go ahead and find another establishment that's gonna be selling arrows. Here at Zora's Domain, it's gonna be the same thing. Three bundles of arrows at 20 rupees for the entire bundle. After recording, I went to go check Lookout Landing, which actually has five bundles of arrows. Therefore, you can get many more arrows per hour if you, instead of going to Zora's Domain, you instead come here to Lookout Landing and you put down your travel medallion here. Future Austin is gonna be doing the math on screen on how quickly you can go ahead and purchase all the arrows you need. Buy up all these arrows, and now we just need to sleep. For that, I'm gonna take a travel medallion back to my house, make my way inside to my bed, and now we're just going to be sleeping until the next day. Right now it's 7.05 a.m., so we're just gonna sleep until morning again. Let's use the travel medallion fast travel back to Taino Village. And as you spawn back in, you're gonna see that these arrows are back in stock. Oh. Uh -huh. oh. Now let's use the travel medallion for Zora's Domain. And as soon as you spawn back in, you're going to see these arrows here. In Breath of the Wild, there was a mechanic that made it so that if you had, I think it was 50 arrows, then the vendors wouldn't sell you anymore. They've removed that restriction in Tears of the Kingdom to say, hey, you could have as many arrows as you want, because if you're unprepared, you go to take down a Gleok, you may be using 50 arrows in a single battle. Now, granted, if I was really on a mission to do this, I could readjust my house. That way, as soon as I fast travel back in, I'm going to be directly in front of my bed. But from time for me to wake up, go around to these destinations and collect these arrows. I've been having a timer run for this, and I'm now at two minutes and two seconds. So 122 seconds for me to go around and make this lap to these shops. So if you wanted to go ahead and buy arrows to get yourself a whole bunch, that would probably be the fastest way and a heck of a lot cheaper than you going around to the different stables where Beetle's gonna be, you have to go to the shrine, you have to fly on over, you have to find where Beetle is, and then you're gonna be purchasing there at a price of 50% higher. Another way for you to get arrows that you may have done a lot more at the beginning of the game but you haven't done in a while is scan your amiibos. Every time that you're going to be scanning your amiibos, you're going to be getting a whole bunch of supplies dropping from the sky. The Link's Awakening Link is going to be dropping some barrels that may have apples, shrooms, arrows, a bunch of things that you could get from them. Toon Link just gave me five arrows, so it may just be a random thing. It might be all of the Links have a small chance. Ooh, a Seabreeze Boomerang. A nice cobble crusher. Thank you, Daruk. I actually haven't even scanned these in ever since I started taking down the parts of regional phenomena, so now I'm able to get the different, better weapons. I know for a fact that the 8-bit link is also gonna be dropping you barrels that have either apples, mushrooms, apparently nothing, or single arrows. The Guardian Amiibo is gonna be dropping large metal crates that may have arrows or various types of food inside of them. It's not much, but hey, better than nothing. While you're doing this, you may also go ahead and get yourself a whole bunch of wooden shields, like traveler shields, soldier shields. I believe the Sea Breeze shield is also considered to be wood, so there you go. I also want to mention that while you're out on your adventures, new to Tears of the Kingdom, you're going to be finding traveling merchants, which are typically going to be people on horses that have a wagon behind them. They may have arrows for you, as well as some other things that you may just typically need. So as I've talked about, one of the best ways to naturally find arrows not from enemies and not purchasing is going to be crates. And one of the best places that has a lot of crates that it's going to respawn reliably for you is going to be the wind temple after you went ahead and cleared out the entire wind temple there's going to be lots of large wooden crates that you may have just completely overlooked your first time around i have 273 arrows right now i just got 12 more from these two crates making your way to the forward of the ship and then taking the left entrance you're going to be able to find two more crates right here one of those was a 10 stack hopping down one floor you're going to be able to find two more boxes Then jumping down the staircase, you're going to be able to find two more on your way to the basement second floor. At the very bottom, you're going to be able to find two barrels that may have some arrows for you. So I just got 72 arrows for, I don't know, being here less than two minutes. And the Wind Temple is going to be following the same rules for overworld respawns. As long as you're not in this 180th of the map, which is fairly uninhibited, then every minute there's a 1% chance each of these crates is going to respawn. Come back after two hours of in-game time for a high probability of all of them to be back. Come back after three hours for almost a guaranteed chance. But my absolute number one recommendation, if you need arrows in this game, 
is to farm Lionels. Lionel farming is going to solve so many of your problems that if you've seen my videos on how to actually get some of the most powerful weapons in the game, you're going to be able to take down Lionels absolutely no problem. Or, which I don't even have one of my good ones right now, and this isn't even the highest level of Lionel, once you're farming the right items and once you stack all your multipliers together, taking down Lionels is very easy, and typically they're going to be dropping about 20 to 30 arrows for you. And not only are you getting 30 arrows from this Lionel, but they're always going to be dropping a multi-shot bow. It's either going to be a three shot or on rare chance you're going to be having a five shot. Five shot Lionel bows are some of the best bows you're going to have in the game because, well, you're shooting five arrows at once. 335 down to 334, but you shot five arrows. And again, because they fixed the whole multi-shot thing, you're still going to be able to retrieve that one arrow. So now every arrow that you lose, you're going to be getting five times as much damage from that one arrow. That's the reason you should be farming Lionels. They take so not a lot of time to take down once you're actually good at it. I typically just keep my Lionel killing weapon inside of my house on a display shelf. It lists as 162 damage. However, because I have my bone armor on and because I have an attack up dish on and because it's on its very last hit, that 162 is actually 875. So just for demonstration purposes, right now I have 335 arrows dropped down a travel medallion here at the Floating Coliseum, and I'm just going to go ahead and take care of all of these Lionels. If you're not that good at the shield parrying, you can always just use Keese eyeballs, that way you can lock on them from farther away, or sometimes when I just don't want to be bothered. Base level Lionel only takes two hits. A blue Lionel takes three hits. I just make sure to not press the Y button too many times, otherwise I can jump off and break my weapon. A white Lionel has four hits. A silver Lionel has five hits. And when it comes to the armored silver Lionel, I just use a flurry rush with a Mulduga hammer. One, two, three, four, five, six hits for him. And uh, yeah, that's it. Now is also the time that I look at all of the bows that I have in my inventory and I drop out anything that's about to break and I pick up all the better Savage Lionel bows. Well, there you go, guys. That's going to be all the advice I have for your just regular gameplay, how to get arrows, how to farm them up, how to buy them efficiently. And then also, you know, if you want to just get a whole bunch of arrows by defeating Lionels, which is definitely what I recommend. If you found this information helpful, do me a favor, drop a like down below, share it with a friend or whatever community that you want. For more Tears of the Kingdom helpful videos, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.